o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I'm going to consider this as my... I'm probably going to put them out at some point, actually, just so you can see the difference between this one and those. And it's just, I suppose, just good to get that material out there at a later date. I'm not too sure when I'll upload that or this one, even to be fair. Um, I'm not necessarily saying this is any better, but I'm just going to try and keep it simple. I've discovered a few things. I can only get like 20 minute videos at a time. Due to memory on my phone, got too many photographs and other stuff on there that I do need. Um, yeah, so what I want to talk about really is first and foremost is just identity. Is I don't think it's relevant who I am, my name. I like the idea of having something to go by, as we all need a you know someone wants to talk to us, well, write a comment, they want to put your name or just address you in general, okay? So I thought about that and, I, and there was a game called uh, Medal of Honor, well it was done by Medal of Honor. And it was about... That's not what it's about, but in there they have all, they have all their individual names, Rabbit, Mother, uh, Vegas, Panther, Voodoo, and there was one of them, Preacher. Now I'm going to use that, I like it, I think a lot of people will say it kind of like fits even though I don't consider myself to be preaching or a preacher, I just think it's a good like pseudo name or alias name, um, so yeah I'm going to go with that, call me preacher, okay, hope that I don't think there's any copyright on that or anything, I haven't looked into that, uh, so yeah, this first video I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about one subject, as I say, I can only do 20 minute videos, so if I have to do two or three just to cover that subject, then I'll do so, just to clear up the hat situation. So I've only just got back from town, it's a little bit fresh out there, I realised I went outside with it inside out, I've got some sort of spot or boil on my nose or something, I just kept noticing that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do one subject and then just one thing that is in the current media, okay? And I think we're probably going to discuss the Caroline Flack situation. Anyway, um, before I go f any further forward, I just want to mention that I am currently writing a book called Just Another Brick in the Wall, okay? You might remember the tune from Pink Floyd, um, very similar in, in, that term, in that term. But yeah, the, the book, Just Another Brick in the Wall, <laughs> so far it's only about three or four pages along A4, just, I'm just scribbling it down for now, just literally whatever comes to mind, just putting it down and I'll type it up on a launch it as an e-book due to, well, from what I understand, it's, it's the easiest way to do it, less overheads, it's not a money making thing, if it gives me a bit of pocket money so be it, you know, a grand or two in the bank would be nice, it always helps in, in, this current, in the situation that we're all in. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about capitalism, that is going to be the subject, and I was going to call it uh, capitalism, and then just as like an undertitle, the religion without a god, that's what I was going to title that as. Um, so yeah, the book, I don't know whether I'm going to continue with it, I'm not too sure, it's, it's quite hard to put things on paper, and this might be an easier, not easier, but a better way to reach larger audience. Whereas in terms of you know a book, you want people to. I only want a small amount per copy. I you know as an ebook, I don't. I'm not looking to become an author per se or anything like that. And it's not a book. It's not a story. It's not a biography. It's just a memoirs or a scrapbook of that kind of you know where you're just putting your thoughts and feelings. How people have done some written material about the world capitalism, you know, war, all the various subjects, it's just that, but it's me trying to capitalise everything within one framework, which is it's not easy. Okay, so, capitalism, the religion without a god. It's gone really dark all of a sudden, the sun's just gone in. It's got a bit more light on this subject, literally. Oh, that's a bit better, alright, okay. 
money. What is it? Why do we put much, so much faith in it? And the history of money in itself is, you know, it's a very deep history. <coughs> it, you know, you can trace it back as far as coins from Romans, Egyptians, and those cultures. Okay, but I'm talking about capitalism, the fractional banking reserve system we currently have that we all live by. Okay. Now, I understand in the current situation that we all live in, it is very difficult to see what I'm saying. I know a lot of people have advocated it, but you know, this notion of a cashless society is coming in the form, but not the way that we want it, or not the way that I want it anyway. It is coming. I've noticed, you, any, you can't not notice it, okay? You walk into any supermarket now, there's hardly any staff there. You might get a few people stocking shelves. Why they're still doing that, they can automate that. Just like that, easy. We are becoming, we are at uh, imbalance now with technology and labour, okay? I don't know if anyone's not seen the dot, the connection between having all complete automation, which is the way we are going, and it cannot not go that way because it's all about GDP. It's all about increasing that GDP each year profit, you know, production, everything it has to be increased all the time to meet inflation, etc, etc. Um, but it's, it's going to clash and I think the only reason we haven't seen it come to its full fruition yet is, now, is that I, I believe the government are very much aware and organisations, uh, you know, within engineering and, and everything related to that. I believe that the government understand that you know they can't push things too quickly, too far forward, because it will create a massive imbalance. Um, but there's going to come to a point where naturally companies are going to be, if they're not held back by any red tape or any reason not to do so, any legislation not to do so, they're going to automate pretty much everything. All right. So the human, the, hu the human labor almost or the requirement for human labor almost becomes non-existent um, my concern is that as I was saying about the supermarkets you know you go in there now it's all self-service I remember a few years back or maybe a bit more than that there was only one or two machines when it was just introduced and you know these machines have problems you have one or two people hovering around all the time to Put their key code in, or just you know resolve whatever that same issue is, and maybe maybe that will be required for a certain amount of time. But I I do feel that it's, you know it's only going to take a slight improvement of the system before those problems don't arise anymore. You know they're going to become fully functional. You might need one person always just to oversee any machinery, and then we even have, that was even advocated in the. Um, like the Venus Project, you know, the resource-based economy. There was still requirement for human, uh, we'll call it labour, but, you know, human input. It shouldn't be seen as that. It was hardly, it, you know, it wasn't like what we've got now, where we've got, you know, young, beautiful young minds, 18, 19 year olds, you know, stacking a shelf in a fucking supermarket. Yeah, and it's alright as a stopgap job. And it's okay if you're funding your college, university, or whatever. But you have to understand that there are people that choose that as a career. And you'll see them 30, 40 years old, stacking biscuits and crisps and whatnot in, onto a shelf. And you can say, okay, this individual has a wage. They can have a family, possibly on that wage. I don't know how. I, I, <sighs> I really don't. I look at a lot of family situations and I think, how do you support a family on that? I struggle to support myself and I don't own to. I'm, you know, I'm not in a particularly bad wage bracket. I'd like to be a lot higher. But this, you know, this, let me be honest, I don't give a fuck about money in the sense of what it is. I care about it because I live in a capitalist system and I need to survive and I want to, you know, I want to eat well and have, I want to have relatively nice clothing, driving a you know, a decent vehicle. You know, we all want, we all want these what we you know 
these luxuries of life, so to speak, even though compared to some, they are nothing. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting a little bit off topic per se. Capitalism in, in the core sense of what capitalism is all about. Now, this has been covered so much on the internet, and I don't know, I really, I suppose it's the fear. The fear of stepping outside of the what you know, your security, and the same. You know, no one really wants to put their head above the parapet and be shot, uh, so to speak. But the concern for me is, we all, well, we don't all know, but it's been put across on the internet how the monetary system works. Now, if you have, I don't, I don't want to talk about people's intelligence, but if you have got a basic understanding of math, you should be able to calculate and understand that what we have in place cannot, will not, ever work, ever. It can't. It's impossible. How can you, say you've got four central world banks and then you've got the Inland Monetary Fund. I'm going to look a little bit more into that because I'm not so sure if the Inland, in, International, sorry, Inland, International Monetary Fund, IMF, oversee the four main big large banks or however many of them there are. You know, I'm talking about the Federal Reserve and those those banking systems, the main ones that lend to all the high street banks, basically. Okay, so it's been covered before, but I really want to hit home with it, okay? Now, if you're the banks and you control all the money supply in the world, those main banks, and you control every single dollar, pound, sterling, whatever, any little bit of currency that comes into creative, that comes into the system, that is legal tender. If you create that money, okay, and let's say you've decided on this particular given week, because of the demand requires it within society, you've put an extra billion pound into, uh, well, whatever, 100 billion pounds, be a bit more reasonable, 100 billion pound is therefore pumped in circulation, okay? Now this is basic Robin Peter to pay Paul kind of maths, it's so, it's so straightforward, yet most people, I tell, when I talk to them about it, they don't, I can't understand how they can't fathom why this is dangerous. So the banks turn around and say, okay, we'll put $100 billion sterling, you know, tech legal tender into, this, into the system, but we want 110 or 120 or 105 back. It doesn't exist. They haven't created it. There's no demand necessarily there for it. And therefore, the government is therefore in debt to the bank straight away. Okay, they can never pay it back. We as the taxpayers can never pay it back because, as again, the people understand it doesn't it doesn't exist regardless of whether the money is digital, has any legal tender in the first place. We're not talking about that right at this moment. I'm talking about it based on, you know, what do I have to do? Put some pound coins out on the side and say this is all the money in the world, okay? I, but I want to charge all the countries of the world interest on this money supply, and I want another pound back. It doesn't exist. You can't, you know, I want to say you can't create money out of thin air, but these people do. That is the bottom line. They create money out of nothing. It has no, no backing. The only thing that gives it backing is the amount of money that's coming from tax revenue. Okay? So if you've got, like, in the UK, 80 million people, you know, paying whatever they're paying in tax, and you've got, you think about all those people that are in the 40, the, in their bracket where they have to pay more than 40%, they'll pay 40% tax. Okay, think how much revenue is brought into this country every month from tax. And that's not just your wages, I'm talking about all the taxes. Because most of them don't go to any of the services, okay? Most of them are just going back to pay the deficit. I don't know what Britain's current debt stands at, I think. Oh, I'm just going to have to turn the light on here. I think it stands at something I can't even remember. I watched a video on YouTube years ago and we was at something like £900 billion in debt at the time. I think it's like £1.4 trillion now. I can't remember. The Americans is, is like eight, nine times, ten times that, okay? There's no country that's not in debt apart from there's a very few countries actually. Um, I think at the time, I think it's like Iran. Russia's in debt, 
China's not, I don't, I think China's in debt as well. There was just a few countries, I can't remember who they were now, Saudi Arabia, Iran, I think Korea was even one of them, but it's funny that the, I'm not going to go into it now, but it does seem quite coincidental how the countries that are not in debt also seem to be like America's, you know, hit list, seem to be sanctioned all the time, always getting negative feedback on the news, so, yeah, so I hope that point that I've just made is, uh, you've, got, you've got to understand that, if anyone can come forward and show me any different how this situation works, I mean I'm not going into inflation, we're not going into dividends or anything of that nature, when you go into that it gets even worse, okay, when you get back to the promises made, money's owed, then it becomes, it's catastrophic, it's, it's untenable, okay, we're in debt, we're fucked, yeah, but who are we in debt to and what are we in debt for? That's where it gets me, that's what angers me, this bullshit that we have to all go out, you know, put in this service to require this currency that allows us to live and trade and barter and survive in this. It's just, I'll tell you what, if, if there's a, a race out there, and I'm sure there is, looking down upon us, and we probably are like, you know, the laughing stock of the fucking universe because there are probably so many civilizations out there that, you know, left money behind a long time ago or probably maybe even never had the fucking thing in the first place. You know, realizing how ludicrous it is and how futile it is to have a monetary system. And let's be honest, this monetary system. It is, it is only benefiting a very few at the top, and I'm talking a very, very few that are living way beyond the means of any human being that is even necessary or even practical. Okay? So I'm looking at the time, I've been talking about 17 minutes, so I'll have to cut these videos into little things, so there is going to be a little bit of a, you know, uh, slight sort of break in the in the discussion or in, in me rambling but yeah I've got so much to say about it I just don't want to I don't want to go crazy and just like throw loads of information out there a lot of this information as well is, is questionable it could be it could be debated and I'm open to debate I'm not I'm not advocating I know everything or understand everything, I'm just simply saying that that's the way the monetary system has been explained to me. I've done my own little bit of research, just general internet research, nothing, you know, I've not I've not gone through um what is that called where you not data protection but you know I haven't made inquiries to the point where I've asked for documents, sensitive documents or anything of that nature. I've just general research, Google, you know, Federal Reserve, Bank of England, IMF, you know, all these different things and how money's created. You just put in fractional reserve banking system in, and then just look at it, read it, understand it, try and break it down to keep it simple because, you know, even that can get a little bit complex. Okay, so I'm going to stop this one here, I'm going to link straight into another one, I'm just going to take five minutes to myself, just to have a little think on what I'm going to say next, um, and then we'll run it from there, okay?